Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. All right, guys. So um, if you guys didn't hear the good news yesterday, very, very excited to announce that uh, Hockey Squirrel is joining the Bender Wins family, guys. So he's going to start contributing some picks here and there. We're going to do some uh, some awesome, I'm very excited. We're going to do some great videos. Uh, we're going to do kind of some back and forth and, and discuss hockey games, uh, basically break them down. Games we agree on, disagree. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of hockey cappers, guys, I'm very excited to have him because he is, like, in my opinion, he's the best capper in the world. I mean, he's got a 12.5% ROI, so, like, I don't know how you would even dispute that. Like, there's no one else even close to that. So, anyways, guys, um, yesterday, uh, a couple things I want to go through. So, uh, thank you, Vegas, for that comeback. Honestly, watching um, watching Flurry and Nets sometimes, he's either, like, spot on or he's not and to me maybe being Canadian and I grew up watching Flurry, especially when he played in the world juniors okay so he was like 17 years old playing in the juniors um he made a couple mistakes that cost Canada dearly and maybe I never forgot that but I always associate like these little like gaffes and errors uh that he makes with that so I think maybe they stand out more in my head um because that first goal that really ultimately gave Minnesota that momentum uh that, that's an inexcusable goal at the National Hockey League level. That kind of like rebound and not being able to cover it. But uh, Vegas makes a triumphant comeback and uh, life's pretty good. All right. So um, we went two and one there. Utah, you know, um, bottom line, look, Utah, they got a rebounded big time. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, up against a pretty good rebounding team. But I just felt like, and I watched, I didn't watch the whole game. I watched some of the game. I didn't feel like the compete level was there after that big long speech yesterday about, you know, <laughs> about Utah playing as a team. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they, they played okay, but I mean, they didn't play, they didn't play up to their potential. That's for sure. They got out rebounded. Uh, it was, it was a little bit frustrating because like, you know, there was a lot of like kind of rebound 50, 50 balls. And it just seemed like, you know, they weren't all that interested in going up and getting those. Um, but yesterday, something interesting, okay, in the NBA. So, look, um, I, I, I was hanging out yesterday. I, I watch games all over the place. But I was hanging out yesterday in the garage. Um, I got a TV out there. I'm watching, watching the Chicago Bulls game. So I'm watching the Bulls game. My neighbor comes by, have a quick beer and chit-chat and stuff. And um, this was interesting, okay. So, look, we get down to the end of the Bulls game. Now, I shouldn't be able to do this. Uh, I think there is about a minute, minute 20 left. So... Um, as a joke, I mean, not really half serious, but also as a joke, I said, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen at the end of this game. So I walked them through, like, it's like you see something enough times and you're like, I know what's going to happen here. That was yesterday's game in Chicago. I literally call, I swear to God, guys, honest to God, I literally called the last five plays in the row exactly what was going to happen, including missed shots, made shots. Miss shots, field goal, or um, fouls, etc. I called the last five plays that game, right down, and I even called right down to the last thing I said. Here's what's going to happen: the last two plays of the game are going to be Chicago missing a three, um, and then the the game. Actually, I, I called it off by one point because I thought there was going to be a three on the other side. But anyways, I called the game perfectly. I said Chicago is going to miss a three. Um, there's going to be like, you know, two or three seconds left on the clock. They can't win, but they're going to foul anyways. And then um, basically they're going to give up two free throws and the spread's going to not get covered by one. And I called it perfectly. And I don't know, he's like sitting there, like, just like looking at me, like, are you serious? Because I called it perfectly. I'm even, at, even, so I called it. I'm like, even now when the guy's inbounding. So the Chicago has a ball. Everything's gone exactly how I said. I'm like, he's going to shoot a three here. He's got to shoot a three, right? He's going to shoot a three. He's going to miss. They're going to foul him. It's going to be two, three seconds left. I reiterated that. What happens? Inbound ball, kicked out, three, missed, foul. Game's over now. You can't catch up. There's two seconds left on the clock, okay? Foul him. I'm like, I told you. And then watch. He has both free throws. I guarantee he has both free throws. And they cover the spread. And sure enough. So I shouldn't know that stuff, right? But why, why like, you know... Why does it come to mind that I've seen this 6,000 times in the NBA? Um, you know, I, I want to believe, I really, really want to believe deep down inside that the NBA has given everybody a fair shake. 
just doesn't seem like it this year, does it? Uh, that, that, look, I'm not talking anything about the Utah game. Nothing. Like, look, Utah lost that game outright. It doesn't matter. But I, I, I just got to say there's some other games. I shouldn't be able to sit down. There's no way I, there's no way, you know, I should be able to sit down and, and say, this is exactly what's going to happen in this game and have it be right. Did I get lucky, you know, to be exact right down to the timing and the type of shots that we're going to be taking? Did I get lucky? Maybe. I don't know. I got a witness. I got my, my neighbor say, he's looking at me like, how do you know that? It's like, I know it because I've seen it 7,000 times before. It's too familiar. So I don't know. Take from that whatever you may, guys. Um, maybe I got lucky and I just predicted the exact order and timing that things were going to happen. Or maybe I knew it was coming. Anyways, um, let's get on to today, guys. So um, I have a total of seven plays, guys. I have two in free picks, five in master class, but I do have a two unit play for you guys in free picks. Um, so let's, let's get cracking here, guys. First off, uh, I will give you the two unit play guys and we're going to split it up. Okay. So it's, we, we're going to hockey guys and we're going to take one unit. So one unit on Carolina minus 118. So one unit Carolina minus 118. And then I am going to take a little bit of flyer here, guys. And we are going to go one unit on Carolina minus one and a half goals plus 190. I got a nice system on this, guys. They are on the road. You get typically higher odds there. Now, I will preface it and say, look, UC Soros has been good at home. He hasn't been great this year, but he's been good at home. But this Carolina team, guys, compared to this Nashville team, they're on a totally different level. They're on a totally different level. I've talked about this before with Nashville. People associating this Nashville team with the Nashville team of a few years ago. And they are not that team. I'm sorry. They're just not that team anymore. Um, and Carolina is, they're, they're fast up and coming guys as a cup contender. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think, well, okay. So here's the other thing. Um, you know, I, I don't really put this too much into it, but it's nice to, to see that um, this is a consensus play with the hockey squirrel. I think we, we agree on this. Now don't a hundred percent quote me on that, but I'm like, 95% sure I saw that that was a, a play for him on care uh, just on Carolina not the minus one and a half I'm not a hundred percent sure how he's playing it um but we got talking about depth in hockey a little while ago and I had mentioned that I think that that my opinion Vegas has the best depth in hockey um and I'm pretty sure he said he was on Carolina maybe if he's watching comment down below um but I'm pretty sure he said that Carolina I agree like look, Carolina um you know, depth wins hockey games, guys. It wins hockey games. It wins Stanley Cups. It wins, wins, wins. Depth, okay? And that's what Carolina has. So look, um, we're going to take Carolina one unit, minus 118. And then a unit, guys, minus one and a half goals. So that means basically they have to win by two goals. But get plus 190 on it. So um, that's what we're doing today on Carolina. All right? Next, guys. Uh, we are going to take the New York Islanders. New York Islanders minus 150. Uh, again, guys, Varlamov, one of those goalies where, you know, there's certain goalies I will never take on the road. There's, I just won't. Okay, there's certain goalies I will not take on the road. He's not one of them. Okay, he is a consistent goalie on the road. He has a goals against average around 2.1, which is phenomenal. Phenomenal on the road, guys. There's other road goalies that you just cannot trust that they were they are going to probably have these epic meltdowns that they have on the road. Um, I'll give you an example, actually. We we're just talking about UC Soros on the road this year. Go check his road numbers. They're terrible. They're terrible, terrible, terrible. His home numbers are good. Uh, but, you know, again, we're looking at a small sample size. What you want to look at is you do want to look at, um, you know, at least a couple years you don't have to look at a whole career. You really don't because it's not indicative of today's game. You know, if you look at a goalie and been in the league 15 years, it doesn't really matter what his road safe percentage was in, you know, 2010 or something. But if you look at a couple of years, because this year it's a small sample size that can be skewed, obviously, right? Um, the other thing too, it's important to understand those games. So like if you're looking at a small sample size just from this year and you're doing your, your hockey splits for your goaltenders, um, look at the game logs. Okay. Look at the game logs and understand how that number was arrived at. Okay. It, if a goaltender goes into a game 
and puts up a 48 save shutout. I mean, they don't happen often, but you go put up a 48 save shutout or some craziness like that. What's that going to do to his numbers on that split? It's going to affect them greatly. Okay. Now throughout the course of a full 82 game season, that will, that will level itself out. But you know, we're dealing with shorter season or we're dealing with, you know, some of the goalie splits. We've only had 10 starts on the road. What's that going to do? It's going to magnify his numbers. So it's important you understand that and look deeper, guys. Anyways, that was our second play. New York Islanders, minus 150. So we got a couple units going down on the Carolina game. We got a hockey play. And uh, I will try to, like, I'll try to, like, break this out a little bit better where you guys get a mix of basketball, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, it, it just happened to work this way today again. So um, that's what we're doing, guys. That is it. If you guys are interested in Masterclass, I have three college basketball plays, two additional hockey plays, and uh, yeah, BenderWins.com. It's $99 a month, guys. It's like three bucks a day, and you get all my picks every day. All right, guys, so thank you very much, and as always, have a very lucky day.